Good morning. I'm Scott Wright, General Director of Mobile Opera, and I'm here with the fabulous Stephanie Dosh, Mezzo Soprano Supreme. Um, this is what Florida Grand Opera, FGO Studio, had to say, or this is the review that came from her Trouble in Tahiti. Explosively eloquent, fervent, commanding vocal prowess, highly coveted for her richly colored mezzo. I can't wait. <laughs> She's, you're coming to sing Carmen for us in, uh, for Mobile Opera in October. And uh, I just, I, I'm, I'm really excited about that. But before we get to talking about Carmen, um, just tell me a little bit about, uh, about Stephanie. Sure. Um, so I uh, grew up in Western New York outside of Rochester. And um, I've been musical my whole life. I, uh, I played piano and I sang in choir, the only musical person in my family. Um, and I knew that I wanted to be musical forever. So I initially thought the only way I could do that was to be a music teacher. So um, I decided I was gonna go to um, college to get my degree in music education. But I kind of had an interest in like learning more about classical vocal singing before I went because I loved the classical music that I sang in choir. And I also loved performing on stage in musicals. So the summer before my freshman year of college, I went and I saw um, a uh, Metropolitan Opera live HD production of Carmen actually and uh I went all by myself and I watched it and I thought wow this is like the most epic thing I have ever seen and I want to be involved in it and um here I am now essentially. That's cool you were um you actually uh come by this French which Carmen is by Georges Bizet is written in French you actually come by pretty naturally don't you? You were uh, born yes. out there in Nice? Yes, I was born in Nice. Um, my, my dad grew up in Canada, but he has French citizenship from his mom. And my mom is American. But when they had me, they were living in France, actually, because my dad played basketball professionally over there. So, so because, because my dad retains citizenship, and then I was born there. Um, I have dual citizenship between America and France, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Well, if you weren't if you weren't singing opera, um, then what would you do? I find that musical people are always creative. They have to find some way to express that creativity. So, what would you do if you weren't singing opera? Yeah, I uh, I think I would still be on stage. I think I would still pursue um, a career in acting, uh, stage performance, um, it, you know, maybe even film. I just, I love getting to walk in someone else's shoes for a little bit. And um, I, I don't think I could live life without having the opportunity of like, getting to portray different characters. That's one of my favorite things about opera. Um, and there are some really amazing characters in opera, but I know that there are also some really exciting ones in uh, other forms of art as well. So I think, I, I think if I weren't musical, I would still definitely be um, portraying characters in some sort of other form. Well, that's, that's great. It's still storytelling, you know, because I've, I think a lot of people who are not involved in opera, um, even some people that appreciate opera, they don't really understand the storytelling side of it. I mean, you can you can have a pretty good career in opera if you're a great storyteller, even without a beautiful voice. Truly. 
if you have a beautiful voice and you're not any good at storytelling, then you know you probably don't go very far in opera because it really requires the acting element as well. So that's a, that's a good thing that you can combine both, that you have a beautiful voice and you can, uh, you can tell a story. And I'm looking forward to hearing that story. Which brings me to, uh, I guess, the second question is that we know that Stephanie is not Carmen. And you just said you want to, you like the fact that opera gives you the chance to walk in someone else's shoes, to become, uh, you know, to take on the characteristics of someone else, someone that's maybe entirely different from you. Tell us about then your friend, Carmen, the one that <laughs> you want to portray. What I love about Carmen is that she prioritizes and seeks freedom over everything. And I think that that's very admirable, uh, especially in a world where, you know, when, when we prioritize the people who we care about, we prioritize career, we, we prioritize all these different things in our lives, we can't do everything that we want. And I think that it's really exciting that Carmen is someone who does whatever she wants all the time at all costs to get what she wants. And there's something really exciting about having the opportunity to portray someone that I would never, I could, I could never be that way in real life. And you probably couldn't either, Scott. Like, I don't think we know too many people who could. And, yeah. um, and because she is really wild and she is, she is very fast and quick thinking and smart, it's, it's going to be exciting to portray someone that doesn't have to, she doesn't have to think that hard about what she needs to do in order to get what she wants. I just think that that's going to be such an exciting aspect of, of portraying her. Like musically, of course, like it is so beautiful and exciting and, and like the greatest melodies written in opera. It is I am so thrilled to to have the opportunity to sing this music. Um, but really, Carmen is like, she's such a stage animal of a character and, and such um, a big ask dramatically from someone and an icon uh, within opera. And um, she, she really deserves to have a lot of care from the director, conductor, of course, the person singing her because her story has been loved for, you know, almost 150 years. So it's, uh, it, I, I'm just like so excited to have the opportunity to portray her. You'll get to, uh, you'll get to work this out uh, with uh, stage director, um, Benjamin Smith from Memphis. Uh, you you already know him. You've worked with him before. Is that right? Oh yeah, we worked on um, uh, HMS Pinafore back in 2019. I was cousin Hebe. That was so fun. This is going to be so different. <laughs> but Ben is awesome. Yeah, it's entirely different. And uh, he and I have talked about this, and we're uh, we're really all excited about delving into the uh, the idea of Carmen and how relevant it is a story to today now this is this is set in the early 19th century and of course Carmen is confronted Carmen then is confronted with not with uh, early 19th century Spain which is I mean if there's if, if there ever has been a man's world I suppose that <laughs> that's where you find it is in early 19th century Spain and so she has to as you said, work with her wits and uh, and her her own assets to uh, to be able to maneuver within that space and try to, as people do, try to find love. Uh, she winds up in that abusive relationship with um, um, Jose, and I've always seen Jose as the abuser rather than Carmen because he's trying to contain her trying to make her be his as opposed to letting her be Carmen. Exactly. But then the big question that everybody has a different opinion on is, is Escamillo 
the bullfighter, is he the love of her life or is he the, the welcome escape for Carmen? <clears throat> Man, that's a good question. <laughs> I know. I well, Give us a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Solve the mystery. I, uh, you know, my, my gut instinct is that he's, he's a great match for her. I'm not sure if, if Escamillo is Carmen's forever person. Um, sometimes I wonder if they're, uh, a, you know, both of their lives are so exciting that that would be a pretty turbulent relationship. Um, but uh, I I do think that he is a bit of an escape for her because she is in such an unhealthy situation with Jose. That being said, I think that she has a lot of fun with him, with Escamillo. I think that that um, they could have something that flourishes into something that she would really enjoy. Um, but I think that. Escamillo is really all about having fun and being a star. And um, Carmen has a lot of depth, which which is why she's attracted to Jose in the first place. He's just, he just doesn't know how to handle uh, everything that he's experiencing. And uh, he takes it out on her. It's a, it's a tremendously exciting tale. It has its... Uh its own story and then it has its backstory and you can you can read all of that into it but it's just enjoyable at every level it's one of the most exciting and dramatic operas that's ever written and certainly some of the most beautiful music in opera uh, i can't I, I can't wait to hear it again there's there's this real dark side to carmen uh as well as really beautiful music and it's certainly the joe has a tragic ending if you wanted to make it right for Carmen, if you wanted things to be good for Carmen, how, what alternative would you suggest to be say? <laughs> how would you end it? My initial thought is, oh man, it's a little dramatic, but I sometimes kind of wish that she would kill him instead. Like, <laughs> I do, I, I do. I just, I just, somehow I knew you were going to say that, you know, I think every partner has probably had the same thought, give me that knife, you know. <laughs> honestly, honestly, because, I mean, she could do it, she could figure it out, and, um, you know, it, it's not like she's done everything that she could at all costs to, to survive before, she's a survivor, and, and I think that, in that case, she would do that in order to survive. Now, you know, leading leading up to the finale, um, words are said about, you know, she she's experienced uh, coming face to face with the the card of death um, in in the third act. I mean, she's she, there's this buildup of her coming to accept that her life is going to end soon, but. Um, I, I think it would be so satisfying um, for today's audiences to, to see someone like her really come out and survive at the end. Yeah, that would be probably better for our sensibilities, <clears throat> but I think Bizet got it right. She really stands up for herself in the end. Mm -hmm. And even though, even though she dies in that attempt, she sets herself free for sure. Um, and once and for all, and then Bizet has that triumphant music coming from out of the arena at the very end. So you have this, you know, you have this tragedy unfolding outside, but inside they're cheering the bullfighter and you think it's not really for Escamillo, you know, Bizet put that in there for Carmen. So for Carmen. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a masterwork for sure. Truly. So is there, um, is there anything else that you'd like to sing or anything else that you're that you're really looking forward to uh, to be able to to do in the near future? What's up? Oh, man. Um, well, first, I just have to say that 
because this Carmen is the first opera that I've that I ever saw I mean this has been a dream role of mine for you know for forever and um I mean for sure Carmen is something that I am so excited to perform. Um, leading up to Carmen, I'm uh, I'm currently in production for um, Handel Xerxes uh, in San Diego, and that has been a very very cool musical discovery. Um, it's my first Handel Baroque role, and haven't got a revival. Yeah, I've I have been loving it. Um, and, uh, and then right after this, I'm actually going to go sing La Cenerentola, uh, for, this is my third time singing Cenerentola. And, uh, I love that role, that totally different mood from Carmen. Um, it's, uh, a lot of good feelings and she's triumphant in the end and, um, some, some really virtuosic fun music to sing in that one. Very good. <clears throat> Are you, um. Uh... If, if things open up, are you headed to Europe? Not yet. It's definitely something I think about. Um, my, my brother actually followed in my dad's footsteps and he plays basketball in Europe. So I do have uh, someone to go see, which is very cool. But I absolutely like consider singing over there. I, aside from the fact that you know, it's where I spent the first few years of my life and I really want to spend time there. Um, it's also where opera came from and I want to go back and I want to, I want to see the houses where it was performed and visit the places where my favorite composers experience their lives. And um, it's definitely a goal of mine to spend some time over there. Well, we're really looking forward to having you in Mobile, looking forward to being able to show you our city. We're very proud of it. <clears throat> very proud of our company. We're the, the uh, oldest performing arts organization in the state of Alabama, and I think the 12th oldest still operating opera company in the United States. And, That's uh, amazing. We are 75 years old and uh, having our 75th anniversary, which was actually supposed to be last year, but of course, you know, last season didn't really happen, so we just did what the Summer Olympics did, moved everything to this year, so we're uh, we're Happy grateful paid. that you were able to move with us, and we're looking forward to uh, looking forward to having you in Mobile very soon. I'm I'm honored that y'all are having me. I'm so excited. Thank you. Great. Thanks for visiting with us. Mm -hmm.